Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today's video takes us to an interview that was done by Professor Crack and of the Forgiven Jerry. Links to their channels will be in the description box below. They uh, make some pretty good content, so go check them out. Anyway, they asked me to come to do an interview with them, so I agreed to do it. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Do you want to talk about the finger and having and having three pointing back at them you know what i mean this the, the brothers yeah, are the exactly. perfect example of that <laughs> exactly <laughs> hey guys i don't know just for anybody who watches this after the fact we are going live 15 minutes early tonight um just just because because we're all here so a little a little bonus for you guys um i know people are slowly trickling as they get the notification but uh i'll probably say this a couple of times i'll reiterate what i'm saying now at the seven o'clock hour and and uh just want to say thank you black cart knight for coming on the show i really appreciate it i know jerry does too and i've been looking welcome, forward welcome. to the last few days now i'm glad to be here so awesome well hey like i say uh you know we we try to have a fairly interactive show with the audience and let them uh um trickle in give shout outs to ota and ig as i call them rack the jipper and mark and um but we also really not lately what's up ian throw a bunch of content out there so much as we just try to have a conversation and so Again, you're our guest, and I'd like to get to know you a little bit better and would love if you would kind of share just a bit. And I know you did a few minutes off air with us already, but for the people who are now tuning in, kind of about your journey as, as far as a creator goes and how you got started. <clears throat> okay. Basically, it goes like this. Uh, I work in the field of education as a paraprofessional, mm -hmm. and uh, I get summers off, of course, as a result of that. Uh, well, not entire, the entire summer, but generally uh, July to, to, to August I get off. Mm -hmm. So I needed something to do, and uh, well, I figured, uh, why not go ahead and uh, try a YouTube channel, so I converted my uh, original YouTube channel that I uh, just uh, signed into every day just to watch uh, age-restricted content and uh, changed the name and uh, was like, where do I, what do I want to do? I've been, mean, uh, okay, uh, I'll just go with the Fraud Order content and, uh, well, and if you've watched my early content, you know how much it sucked. Um, the first one I tried <laughs> was... Uh, on July 10th of last year was Cartnark, and I think I did all right on that one. I haven't really taken a look at it since then. Maybe on my one-year anniversary I'll do it, but uh, I've been trying to do, do different things here and there, so improve my channel as I go along. So you say you're maybe on your one-year anniversary. I guess you're coming up on that then? Uh, yeah, July 10th will be the... Uh, date of my first upload on this channel wow very cool you know my date of my first upload is like november or something or that's when i started the channel january 1st is the first upload but like i really i i, I think mid-february was when i really started to like give it some gas and and go um but yeah congratulations man coming up on a year coming up on ten thousand subscribers you're uh doing well yeah um yeah it took it's taken a lot of work to get this far and i've tried to help other people out but sometimes those people just can't handle it they and i understand it's all i mean i thought about just saying to hell with it and walking away plenty of times but i've never really done that in my life so i just continue uh, going on yeah that's a good attitude to have it's kind of funny that you say that because off air um Jerry and I were talking about just life and some of the personal challenges that I have right now. Uh, you know, employment for me, I, I have had a grant funded position for 
uh, a couple years and unfortunately my agency lost the grant so it wasn't oh. renewed so now i'm out there looking again I, i've always done social work uh, you mentioned being a para pro i worked as a uh in a group home for kids throughout my 20s so like now i do street outreach for the homeless and it interviewed um recently this week for another position and i'm hopeful i get it but uh i feel optimistic about it but you know jerry and i were just kind of talking just talking about life and and that was one of the things that we were saying is that you just can't give up, man. You just keep going. You keep pushing. Um, and hey, everybody that's popping into the chat, if I haven't said hi to you guys yet, I'm just welcome to Blackheart Knight. He's joining us tonight and uh, super excited about it. Yeah, yeah this, this is fun. This has been good. And one of my biggest challenges happened only a few weeks ago with well, the place I was living at burning down. So, Losing everything, oh boy. And having to start over again. Yeah, oh, I know, wow. I, I know, I know that struggle, man. I know that. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know that in the, in the, in the, in my residence, you know, place. I, I lost my business that way you know, to a fire. So, wow. yeah, and I, I know exactly. I know, I know that, man. I, I know the rebuilding. I know the having to start over again. It's, it's, it's something that we and me and me and um. Uh, Professor Craig, we're talking about right now is that, you know, you gotta, you gotta just, you know, accept your journey. You know, you can't, you can't compare it. You can't, you can't say, you know, that it's not like this or it's not like them. It's your journey, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta live it, man. You gotta, you you, you gotta go through everything. You got one more road to cross. You got one more bridge to cross. You know what I mean? You, you just gotta just keep going. You know. A hundred percent. Can't yeah. focus on the disaster. You gotta uh, focus on what's ahead of you. Absolutely. Right. You guys are so funny, Scotto. I think Satan himself would pass on working <laughs> with Regan. I saw, <laughs> you know, one of the comments because I do the the street outreach was you can work with Regan, and I said hell no if you didn't see it. And Scotto, man, you guys are so funny too with your your crack funds. I, I absolutely love them, whether it's crack attack or the crackheads or with <clears throat> smoke that, that shit cracks me up. I, 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 I kind of like, like that. that. I kind of like that. The crack puns. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Me too. I love them. Mm -hmm. I, it's just a little community things that I was talking about, you know? So I think I saw something like, have you, you've had a lot of uploads already on your channel. Is that accurate? Post 800. Wow. So how many do you tend to do a day? That would be about three a day so far, huh? Well, my pattern generally changes uh, with uh, my work patterns. If I Right now, I don't want to overload myself, so I'll generally do – on the weekends, I may do five videos with three of them being uh, long-form content and two of them being shorts. And uh, – I'll generally start – I'll schedule – I'll do them in the morning, schedule them for upload uh, periodically throughout the day. During the during the week when I'm out around my work, I will find videos that I can talk about and do them whenever I get home and then schedule uploads like in a, in a scattered in – a, in a scattered format, just stagger them. Yep. yep. So – Yep. And just every couple hours. So, but generally during the week, during work days, or something like this, uh, two longs and two shorts. So, okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, you definitely kind of find a groove, um, or or you don't, right? But it, it takes yeah. some time. And I've gone through my own little ups and downs. And that's one of the things too, with this looking for that new employment is like that kind of throws a wrinkle in everything because I don't, the, one of the reasons I want the job that I have <laughs> or the job I applied for is, uh, it is very comparable to what I have, which is working for me. So, um, anyway, yeah, that's, uh, I hope to actually, amp up the amount of content i put out but the show actually you know i could spend time this time making a video right this seven to eight mm -hmm. type thing that jerry and i do but i like the variety i like i like this talk show format that he and i have and i wouldn't have done it without him i don't think i think he's very unique 
that we just started talking and the more that he and I conversed. And one night we talked about the NBA for like an hour and a half. And I was just like, man, we just got to do a show because we got some good chemistry and I, I like to do it. I like to talk to him. I, I come away. You know, some people are energy vampires. I, Regan is a fucking energy vampire. I'm sure you're yeah. around. <laughs> Regan is an everything vampire. <laughs> uh, just suck so, the life right out of you. Yeah. So <laughs> when I was like, man, I talked to Jerry. I always like come away feeling good. And as I've shared again about the recovery, like, most of us in the 12 step community, you know, I don't go to a ton of meetings um, or I should say recovery community, but I don't go to a ton of 12 step meetings, but I do go. And usually I don't want to go, but when I walk out of them, I'm glad that I did. You know, it feels like something I have to do leading up to it. And then after the fact, I'm so glad that I made the choice to do it because I, I feel like filled up. And can I? Can I can I share something about the twelve step community yeah. real quick? Because, <laughs> because okay, um, when 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 I when when I because uh, you know like I dabbled in in like in in using coke and using all the like you know stronger drugs and stuff like that when I was partying up and everything and I was I was having fun so I decided you know what in order to like uh, get on my journey of being like, you know what? I, I want to purify myself in the sense that I want to say, I don't need those things. You know, mm -hmm. I went on a little 12 step thing to try to help myself out and say, you know what? Yeah, I was an addict and I want to quit. And I did it. And I, and I was with one group for like about, I, I want to say like about a year and I got upset with them. And I'll tell you why, because I was honest and said that I was smoking weed. I'm, in the weed business and I was still oh, using weed yeah. and I wasn't going to stop using weed. Yeah. And they would not give me my year chip. Yep. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, we could have a whole conversation about that. And I, I get it. Like I, I get it. If that's their principles and they're sticking to them, like, so be it. But I will say I have seen so many people, who are out there using coke and heroin and hard drugs and then they switch to cannabis and they live a very productive life and so i don't personally use it because it just isn't for me but a i think cannabis generally speaking is great it's positive for a lot of people and b i don't judge anybody i don't think it's a for us to um stick our nose in other people's recovery or their journey or place expectations on them. I'm, I'm a big fan of harm reduction myself. So whatever helps a person and improves their quality of life, you know, go ahead. Yeah. I, 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 I just, I just, I just remember being so petty about that. Yeah, it, it, it turns people away. Unfortunately, it turns people away. So Jerry, you were on Hez today. Yeah, you didn't know that? No, I didn't catch that. We got to get him on this show. Nah, we will. He, he's he's a prima donna. It's difficult to get him anywhere other than uh, his shows. He's worked on it, I see, and he's blowing. He's giving us the blow off. Well, pretty soon when we're huge, he'll be unable to resist. <laughs> he likes to he likes to pretend he likes to pretend he's this real like sweet guy and everything, but behind the scenes, he's such a prima donna. Oh, he's not like man. my show, my show, wow. my show. You guys should hear him. He sounds like Alex Jones. Breaking news right here. Uh, by the way, congratulations, Eric, um, for your seven years. Mark, I'm not exactly sure what that comment meant. Seven years and still a junkie, but you know what? Hell, congratulations to you too. Life is good. <laughs> um, At least 20... you can admit it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Hey, well, I'm all about First honesty. Step. We're all about honesty on this show. Uh, I'm a junkie and still have a great job and a father. Right on, bro. Like, hey, like, again, it's not for us to judge. I generally am supportive of, like, Portland's decision to decriminalize personal amounts of all substance use. And Portugal's done it. And, and Mark, hey, I, I'm glad you're joking. But if you were telling the truth, that'd be okay with me, too. I just want people to be happy, productive members of society. I'm all about, like, the golden rule. You know, how you treat other people is what's one of the most important things and if you're happy within yourself and while also not infringing upon other people then that's the winning combination 
And that that was a distinction that, 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 you know, like this morning that I had with Hez because Internet God was there. And he made a great point about how the Constitution is about the government impeding on our rights, not other citizens impeding on our rights. And so I love that you that you'd love to, you know, like talk about the golden rule, because that's what it's about. Right. It's about it's about treating other people like you want to be treated. Right. That's that's our social contract, not not the Constitution. The Constitution is the rule of law, it's right. the rule of law of the land. It's not it has nothing to do with how you treat a fellow citizen. And that's what these fraudsters don't understand. They they, right. they want to impose their wills on us. Like it, like we can't tell them to fuck off or 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 to go, go kick crocs. You know, right. I mean, uh, I mean, Blackheart. You know, like you, who 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 to you like you know is probably the most egregious out of out of all the the, the fraudsters that you that you've uh, that you've covered. Oh shoot! Uh, definitely. I mean, Long Island Audit would be one of them. Uh, definitely Denver Metro audits and uh, Regan Benson, both yeah. all of them trying to push their uh, narrative on. Uh, the I, I think it was uh, Long Island Olive recently that I did that was just lying through his teeth so much on a uh, one of his videos that I did something I rarely ever do and had a like a four or five minute rant on one of my videos. <laughs> that just pissed me off so much. Yeah. So. It's tempting, man, right? When you're when you're editing the video, you don't want to go on too many diatribes, but sometimes it's tempting to get on that soapbox and just be like, oh, these guys are the worst. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, sometimes sometimes I just wish they were in front of me so I could tell them, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. You know, just because you can do something like record in public doesn't mean you should do it. You know, and just because, for example, meth is decriminalized in Portland, I don't know that you should use it. Uh, but I, re again, I really would. You know, people tell people to stay know, away from that. Yeah, try. I, you know, it's, it's probably better that you don't. But um, if I had one that was unreachable, I would say it'd be Matt from New York Public Tour. So many people, including myself, have tried to reach out to him, and he just slaps their hands away. That guy, that that guy has deep seated psycho psychological issues, man. That there, yeah. he has more problems than just people telling him not to do things. Because it, this, the, the thing is, is that like I harp on him about filming kids, and I and I and I and I say it because that's the underlying issue. It started from that. It started from some neighbor catching him filming her kids. She went up to him and told him, "Hey, look, man, I saw you filming my kids." I saw you post it on your on your social media. Take the pictures down and don't do that. And what did he say? Instead of saying, instead of saying, I'm sorry, ma'am, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, you know what? I will do that. He said, What do you mean? I don't film kids. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start a YouTube channel and start filming your kids all the time. Yeah, what a douche. What a douche. <laughs> you know, I love, we got a question and I want to encourage people to ask questions more often, whether we have a guest or whether it's just me and you, Jerry. And yeah, you guys can see it on the screen. Robert asked if you, um, any of the three of us, let's all answer it. Could interview or debate one for auditor, who would it be? Let's start with Blackheart. Just for the sheer entertainment, Glenn Serio. I just love to interview him. Okay. Okay. I could see that. What about you, Jerry? Oh, I guess uh, for entertainment purposes, yeah. I, um, probably DMA, just, just so I can make fun of his 222, 333, 444. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. I think for me at this point, it, it while Long Island Audit is second, I'm going to say Regan's number one because she's so whack and because we do – have worked in the same field, and because I just find her to be the most detestable person I've ever really seen, it would probably be Regan for me. And well, I mean, I, they, they all have their charm. They all have their charm. They'll, you'll find a way to detest them. Yeah, for sure. And IG, I agree with you. They're, they're not going to answer questions. They're not going to have a good discussion. Um, of course not. It's, it's going to be a shit show. It's going to be a shit show. So, what have you like? What do you, what do you say that you've learned, Blackheart, in in the nearly year of creating content? What has like kind of surprised you that maybe you didn't know a year ago? 
Oh, that's hard to know. That's uh, one of the tougher questions right there, Ryan. Uh, definitely the sovereign citizen movement. Uh, I have had to learn a lot about them. Interesting. Uh, and, uh, I had no idea they even existed a year ago, nor mm. the uh, frauder movement. I mean, it's just overall a lear daily learning experience with them. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and having to describe them to uh, people that I know in real life. And uh, having like the and recently I was just at Walmart, my local Walmart, where I used to work, talking to a former coworker about the sovereign citizens, and she was like, you know, we've got a sovereign citizen in our county. Oh wow! I was like, oh really? Maybe I'll go and talk to that dude one day. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, it is. Like you say, it's you learn so much, right? Like. Uh, I'm amazed by the knowledge of the community and Jerry knows a lot. Like there are people who know so much more than I do about frauditors and I've actually consumed a lot of content, but no matter how many different frauditors I'm aware of, it's like, there's just more and more popping up every day. And I'm not as familiar with the sovereign citizens, but there's some overlap there, I think. And it's, so yeah, there is. yeah, I've been meaning to dig into it more actually. That's funny. I don't know why, but go ahead. I, I don't know why, but but that, but, but for some reason, I just reworked that Kenny Rogers song in my head. Everyone considered him the sovereign sit of the county. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Uh, so yeah, got... Sovereign citizens and uh, frauditors are not mutually exclusive. There are traits that do overlap into each other. I, uh, for instance, the hatred of the government. I, right. Uh, that's for one. That's that would be number one. There. Yeah, definitely there. And uh, well, I have to think about that one a little bit more. So, well, they're pricks. So there's that. Yeah, <laughs> they're entitled. They think they know the law. Yeah. They, that they, too. they they come up with their own interpretations. That, yeah. uh, they they, they think they know the law, but whenever you actually look up. Anything they talk about, like you see me do on my videos, you'll find they're full of shit. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They truly, full of shit is exactly what they are. And uh, it's, oh shit. Screwing up some audio here. Yeah, they are. They're so full of shit and they're so disingenuous, which is what pisses me off the most. It's like, you guys don't even believe the shit you're peddling. A lot of them, you know, some probably do, but... There's definitely a large contingent that they don't even think that shit. It's just about the views. It's just about the money. They think it's easy money. You know, I get comments. I'm curious, Blackheart, if you get this comment. I see it a lot. For whatever reason, it kind of grates me. And it's it's this allegation that what I'm doing is all about the money and that I'm somehow making money off of their back and, like, I don't have my own content. And I just think, like... It would be so much easier to be an auditor and build a channel. And anyway, oh, they're making easier. money off the backs of people who don't want anything to do with them by being assholes to other human beings. So, like, I don't know how you know, I'm a bad guy. I have learned to ignore those comments because when I first started and the only comments I had in my in on any video came from those people always trying to tear me down and i mean i had no with really no subscribers at first you know I, and the only ones i had were the haters the haters so I was just, right yeah so i just learned to ignore it yeah you know i find like 90 percent or more of people are like supportive of what i do as far as those who follow the channel and interact with it but every now and then like i did a live stream sunday night and i had a, a troll in here and i'll engage people a to troll. An extent. i'll engage people to an extent. yeah a troll hey what's black's law do you guys i'm seeing a couple comments about that i'm black's law dictionary that's uh what? that's something that's brought up by a lot of sovereign citizens that to support their arguments but it's okay. nothing more than a dictionary it's not law oh. it's 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 a it's a dictionary meant to uh, interpret legal terms. It's basically like uh, um, uh, legal, um, 
legalese, you know, like vocabulary, uh, you know, you know, for, 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 for people who are lawyers and stuff like that, it, they, they misinterpret everything, man. They, 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 yeah. first of all, first of all, these guys, these most of these guys, vision, for instance, yeah, that, that's, that's number one. Number two, most of these guys don't have more than a fifth grade education. And, right. and, and, and third, and, and third of all, they want to go ahead and put their interpretations to laws on things that weren't even, you know, thought of when these laws were written. So they, right. they, they, they're trying to, they're trying to make things happen when it's like, dude, first of all, you, first of all, you don't know anything, you know, like about how, you know, how to interpret these laws, how to read them, what, what, what they mean. You, you would, you would need just, a, just, a, just a, a, a three year course just on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah. they, they yeah. like to go ahead. Yeah, no, like, they like to they like to pretend that they that they've learned everything because they 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 got into a a, a a website where they paid more money than they would have paid if they would have just paid the registration or paid their tickets they, they, <laughs> to get this. They paid, Chile, <laughs> they paid Chile to take his constitutional law scholar course. <laughs> I mean, they pay more in tickets and fines than they would ever in insurance costs throughout an entire year. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I'll have to check it out. Is that I'll lawful law? With that. It's what? What's that? Is that lawful law? Mm. If you don't know, if you don't know that, that's a, that's Derek Brooks. Der, Derek Brooks, uh, the 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 guy who killed all those people in that parade, who who uh, decided to become a soft sit while he was on trial. Oh, it's, God. <laughs> you know, it kind of reminds me. My dad became a preacher when I was eighteen, and. You know, I have a, I'm agnostic, but I have a ton of respect for my father. He's a great guy. And he was not a, like, he's not the pushy type, man. He just wants, he's always wanted to help people. He was in the Air Force. He worked as an ER nurse for a long time. And that was just another way for him to do it. But he, he worked hard for his theology. He went to, he worked a full-time job while he worked on his Master's of Divinity after getting like a general psych degree. When he got his Master's of Divinity, working full-time in his 40s, learning Greek, learning Hebrew, because when it comes to religion, there is a lot of like interpretation. You know, you get a book and us human beings are trying to make sense of it. Law is kind of similar where you see there's so many attorneys because you can argue different things, right? So it's okay to have the discussion, even the argument from time to time, definitely the, the debate, but it, again, it goes back to how you treat people. You don't need to be condescending to people. You don't need to make <laughs> old women feel unsafe. You don't need to put people's kids on the internet. That kind of stuff is right. it drives me nuts. So nearly 800 videos. Do you have like where do you see yourself going from here? Is it just like more of the well, same? Or? Uh, I have been thinking about uh, creating another channel. Okay. To, not in, anything to do with frauditors, but uh, more of a lore type of channel. You ever seen the uh, channel called Lore Reloaded? I have the not. The Star have Trek and everything out. like that? Oh, cool. No, I, I have not. I so I've been thinking about starting a channel uh, like that, just uh, going to Star Trek, Star Wars. I, I'm kind of a nerd Very that cool. way, uh, Babylon cool. Five, uh, and that kind of thing, and just uh, nitpick about that kind of thing. Well, I can tell you, I'm not. Uh, I I dig the sci-fi, like I respect it. The of the things you mentioned, I'm only familiar really with Star Wars. So let's let's. Let me throw this question at you. Of the nine, episode one through nine, what's your favorite? I would say it's a tie between uh, Empire Strikes Back and uh, Revenge of the Sith. Interesting. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, what about you, Jerry? Do you have, I think you've, we've talked about Star Wars before. Aren't you a fan? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I, I actually my my MC name used to be uh, Jedi Knight. Just, just so you know, I'd throw that oh, out there. Oh, right on. Uh, ah. Okay. So um, your I, I, uh, Empire uh, is has to be my favorite, and I actually, oof, there, there's there's a new number two, um, 
but only because of one scene. Uh, and, and that, that would be, um, uh, what is it? The, 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 um, one of the ones in between that came out recently that had the, the whole Darth Vader, you know, <laughs> uh, beating up on people. Force Awakens. Yeah. yeah, there you Yeah, Force Awakens Not, was very good. And hey, guys, real quick, I want to say, if you're in the chat and you're in a Star Wars, you're a Star Wars fan, I want to hear your favorite Star Wars movie. And you see Scotto says he's a Trekkie, so you already got one subscriber if you go that way, Blackheart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And right. if you're a trick, you can unsubscribe to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, Robert just said, sorry, guys, I prefer Star Trek over Star Wars. So leave your, you can put your uh, sci-fi um, debate comments in there. And again, tell me your favorite Star Wars movie. I'd be cur- curious to hear. For me, it's Return of the Jedi, mostly for nostalgic reasons. It's like the f- first movie I remember going to in a theater And my mom used to take me to movies all the time. She loved to do it. She loves popcorn, but she loved to go to movies. This one my dad took me to, and I don't know why, but I remember going with my dad and a friend, and it's just a memory that I treasure. I just remember being blown away by everything on the big screen. I think I was six at the time, so it was just like, it was just so much to take in. It was so awesome. So, um, but I I think- But you uh, know what? Force Awakens is a, gr- a great movie, Jerry. You know what? Uh, well, I, <laughs> I did, you know, um, eh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I live in Hollywood, I mean, dude. This, this Rogue stuff, One. This, Ro- excuse me. Rogue, Rogue One. Rogue One. I, I, yeah, that, that's the one that, that has it, right? No, I, 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 dude, I'm, I'm very so, like, I'm so jaded, dude. Like, it takes a lot for a movie to, like, to excite me. It's like, I, I'm so, like, eh, like, I'm, I'm a whore. I'm, 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 I'm probably a really good movie critic. But I'm horrible, like, you know, like, when, when I'm talking about them, like, I, I don't like hearing myself talk about movies, because I feel like all I'm doing is putting them down, but I like most movies. I just, I just don't like them. <laughs> right on. You know, I don't watch a ton of movies at this point in my life. And one thing I'll say is with the proliferation of media because of technology, one thing that's awesome is people like us and anybody in the chat, we get to have our own channel if we want. There's so many ways that we ourselves can create content. And that wasn't the case back when those Star Wars movies were first coming out. But what we miss out on is we don't have these seminal pop culture moments that we all share anymore, or at least they're fewer and farther between. Because back in the day, if a oh, movie yeah. like Star Wars dropped, everybody saw it. When Michael Jackson's Thriller came out, everybody listened to it. And we don't have that sort of uh, pop culture stuff going on any- anymore. I would, I, would, I, would say, I would say MTV was the first one that died. MTV was probably the first one that died. Like As far as like yeah. losing that connectivity with pop culture, because... I, I, I remember I remember when when uh, music videos were an event, man. I I, I remember seeing uh, um, black and white, and it was like a big deal, like oh, you know, like the the premiere of black and white, and you see, like, <laughs> 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 I, I, I I don't remember. I think I was like twelve or something, and you see Michael Jackson like jump on that car, and it's like oh shit, he just destroyed that car <laughs> right. for no reason, right? <laughs> that's the one that Slash plays guitar on, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right on. So, hey, this is one thing I kicked myself for not asking you about, If and I could have easily forgot it because we've gone down a rabbit hole. But your channel, you've got you've got a knight who like does does some speaking for you, right? Like your kind of little avatar, I guess. Uh, yeah. So well, how did you come up with, with that? Which, which version of it? Because I've had several versions of it in the past year. Well, just like just I. I in general, right? Just it, the, the, version the final isn't form as, important as kind of like the the mechanism that you chose to be like your mechanism of delivery for your content, your your person speaking for you. You know what I mean? How did I choose it? Yeah, it just came. It just came to be. I I'm just like the. It it really has nothing to do with the name i chose for my channel the name i chose for my channel has to do with professional wrestling but the uh avatar that i chose just uh maybe i thought about being something being medieval at that time i couldn't okay. i couldn't tell you it's been a while since i uh just, it was just a thought process i came up with and i just rolled with it right on 
Right on. That makes sense. Uh, you mentioned Such professional. As... Go ahead. No, go, go, you go ahead. Well, I was going to say you mentioned professional wrestling. Uh, so you're obviously a, a fan of pro wrestling. I haven't been watching it as much as I used to. I, and I, I kind of got out of it. But mm-hmm. uh, like I said, my name is kind of uh, my the channel name is based upon uh, the royalty of uh, professional wrestling back in the day of the Hart family. Oh, right on. Okay. You remember? That's, that's, you know what? I was actually going to go there. Yeah. Brett, the hitman. You Hart remember baby. the one wrestler that called himself the Black Heart? Yeah, Owen Hart. Owen? Yeah. Owen, Owen Hart. Yeah. Yeah. So how he called himself, saying, I'm a, not a nugget. I'm a Black Heart. Damn it. <laughs> Owen was fantastic. And I yeah, like pro so, wrestling. You know what? For me as a kid, of course, again, growing up in the 80s and we had those pop culture moments we all shared. Jerry mentioned MTV. You had Hulk Hogan and Cindy Lauper standing together, and Hogan was just mainstream. And I grew up in that era, Macho Man, you know, all these guys. And oh, yeah. 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 We all know him. Everybody's grandmother knows who Macho Man is. And by the way, rest in peace, yeah. Iron Cheek, who passed away today. Um, oh, but, he did? Yeah, he did. I haven't yeah. seen that. Yeah. Man, rest in peace to so many of them, man. I know. Man, rest all. in peace to Scott Hall. Rest in peace to Bret Hart. Oh, my goodness. There's so many. They, well, all, they all died young, or they many of them have. It's, it's clearly a hard life. But you know what? What happened is when people started doing podcasts and Bruce Pritchard who, a, a.k.a. Brother Love, for people who are kind of familiar with WWE, yeah. started to do his podcast. It pulled me back in, and I I start, I still watch to this day, and mostly what I do is I just, like, I catch the YouTube highlights. I don't really usually sit there for three hours on a Monday night, but I follow the stories because I love storytelling. And, yeah, actually, this year's WrestleMania was really good. So. Now... As far as oh, Bret Hart isn't dead. I thought he was. I'm, I'm sorry if he is. Wow. Well, Owen Hart. There's a, there's, 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 Owen yeah, Hart I know, I know. Owen Hart. You know, you know what? There's. I, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you guys this. I'm gonna tell you guys this. Okay. There's a lot of people who you'll hear me say, that I think that are dead because I just, I just feel like they should be dead. <laughs> but, <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> but, you know. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. That's actually funny. I, I, was, I was so into professional wrestling myself that I actually t- took some uh, professional wrestling courses. I was a referee for a while. I did a, one time as a manager, and uh, I, I just had fun with it. Uh, I got beat up a lot, but I, and I had fun with it. Yeah. So, yeah, that sounds like it would be fun. Like, it, I, I honestly, being a pro wrestler would be in my like top ten dream jobs, and I legit mean that because I just love entertainment. I love creating. I love connecting to people, and I think like, oh man, oh, it would yeah. be fun to go on the road and perform in that way. And I like, I like to be like kind of physical too. You know, like I, I love playing basketball. I love, uh, I just like to be outside walking the dog. So that kind of stuff would be sweet. I uh, even John, I, I just did the uh, local circuits uh, in the North Florida area as far as the rest, uh, wrestling professional wrestling circuits, the local shows, mm-hmm. and uh, that. But that was a long time ago, and, and I got to hang out with a lot of uh, wrestlers that I watched growing up, uh, such as uh, uh, the Road Dog Jesse James. Nice, who's in so, recovery. I hung him out, uh, hung out with him for. A uh, few hours on a on a couple days, so awesome. Uh, I was so even many with of Bullet them live Bob. in Tampa. I was even with Bullet Bob Armstrong when they announced that he was going to be put in the Hall of Fame, and his oh, awesome. first words out of his mouth were, "They're gonna have to pry that ring off my cold dead hand." Wow, that's awesome, dude. That's really cool. Super <laughs> cool. So yeah, dude. I I, I hope. Black card, I hope you do start a channel like that. I hope you create that content. I'm with Scotto. I'll subscribe and support it as best I can. Um, the problem okay. is I just got to come up with a channel name. That's one of the more difficult parts. Okay, well, we got a chat here. So if anybody has channel name suggestions, Black Card what, what's the, what's, is in the market. What, what, what's the channel going to be about? 
Basically, sci-fi, it's right? going to be about science fiction lore. Uh, like, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen Lore, lore Reloaded on his channel. He does like star, a lot of Star Trek uh, things. Uh, and uh, also probably doing uh, reviews of Star, uh, star Trek, Star Wars episodes and everything like that. So, And just kind of make a comedy out of it or something like that. I've thought about doing that. I look forward to that. I think your style of content creation fits well with that idea. So uh, I hope to see that for sure. Um, I, Retrekking in, the trek. Retrekking the trek. Trekking uh, the trek. Okay. Yeah. Trekking the trek. I've, good start. <laughs> we'll keep we'll keep fishing. Uh, I'm really excited about the Ahsoka Get trek. show. <laughs> But it's going to be more than about Star Trek. It's going to be about sci-fi as a whole. So, yeah, oh, I see. So yeah, so we don't want to limit to that. Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat partying on a boat together. Oh, so they, IG, they weren't holding up kayfabe. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, he's saying has would advertise for you constantly. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I could see that. To it would also go is a pretty good suggestion, actually. I know that's, that's a like, pretty good uh, suggestion. Yeah, but it's all for more exp- expansion because the frauditor kind of content that we all do is a niche con- a niche content thing. Exactly. Not There's everybody only so knows much about you'll experience with that. Yep. So you got not everybody should know about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Some people are sleep easier without knowing about it. Doctor Sci-Fi is not bad. From the Ozone. All right, we're getting some suggestions. Mm, those are it. good names. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mel Brooks Spaceballs. Uh, that's the first movie I ever watched in theaters when it came really? out. Really? Yeah. Awesome. I was I was gonna say Inside the Black Hole, but I think something else already has that. <laughs> I uh, was a projectionist in a movie theater when episode one came out, actually. So good (laughs) memories for me. Back down in Clinton, Mississippi, back in the day. And I had a fun time in that movie theater. Been a while since I watched a movie in the movie theater. Yeah, yeah. I got to see Kill Bill with Quentin Tarantino. How about that? Ah, very cool. Mm, Nice. So you were sitting with him or explain, tell me a little yeah. bit more about that. He was somewhere in the movie theater. I, I, I got invited to a lot of premieres. I went to like the premiere of, um, I went to Kill Bill. I did Kill Bill Volume 1. Uh, I did I did the premiere of Jackass 2. I did the premiere of, um, who, was in, oh, um, um, who was that movie with, with um, uh, the, the one with, with Jamie Foxx and, and, uh, and uh, um, Django. And no, 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 not, not the good taste. You know, it, it was Jamie Foxx. He, he was a lawyer. Uh, Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler. Uh, <laughs> I can't. Why, why am I? Why is it just like it's just keep completely skipping the, the title? But yeah, I, 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 went to, I went to that premiere. And I think, so you've met and, some of these guys. Yeah, like, I've, I've, I've met. I've, I've, I've talked to celebrities. I mean, some, some, you know, like it's to be honest. There, there's sometimes when you meet, when you meet celebrities that you don't know you're talking to a celebrity. Like you're like, you 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 like when you're at these when you're at these um at these premiere parties and stuff like that where you're like just like hanging about, and so you're you know you're you're in the vibe you're having drinks or whatever you're not thinking about nothing. Then all of a sudden you're talking to some dude and you're like yeah you're having a conversation with them about you know like the Dodgers or about the Lakers or something. You're like blah 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 blah. You just keep going and you're talking. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know you're like holy shit. What, what, what the fuck? <laughs> like, this is El Pacino. <laughs> yeah, it's like, she's got a great ass. I'm like, oh, shit, where did you come from? <laughs> what, dude? You threw that out so quickly and effortlessly. That is nuts. You could, you could pass for El Pacino on an on a internet show. Fuck. Huh. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, dude. Uh, whoa. You know the story he says Jerry knows my story of meeting Chaka Khan and me not knowing it because I was kind of high. <laughs> Jam and Jet met Jam and Jet met Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's that awesome. was kind of like me that's whenever what, I was in the. That's one of the ones I haven't wrestling. met. 
That's kind of like me whenever I was uh, the, doing my thing and with professional wrestling. I'd be in the locker rooms and uh, seeing all these guys I uh, watched while growing up. And thing is, I'm the low guy on the totem pole, and I have to go up there and talk to them because you have to give them the handshake. Uh, when it, I don't know if you know about the professional wrestling handshake or anything like that. So, I do not know about the press. When pro you walk handshake. into a locker room, you have to shake the hands of everybody in there, and it can't be the firm handshake we're used to. You have to give them a light handshake. And uh, really? just to let them know, hey, I know who you are. Uh, I like your stuff, blah, 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 that kind of thing. And if you walk into a locker room, you have to go around shaking everybody's hand. But if you're standing in a locker room and uh, somebody big comes in, like Ric Flair or somebody like that, and he has to come up to you to get the handshake, that's pretty much an insult. If, uh, what you ha- if somebody like him comes in there, you have to walk up to him and get and give him the handshake. Okay, I mean that makes sense. So, Some of that etiquette, um, for sure. That sounds like jail. jail. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. The connections we can make. Like Jerry's like, it sounds like yeah, it sounds a lot like jail to me actually. That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, Jim and Jack, John Gotti introduced himself to me. Wow. Oh my. Wow. Did he kiss the ring, Jam and Jet? Yes. The yeah, God. Did you kiss the ring? We have we have the godparent in here. You know, I one of the one of the one of the celebrities that I got starstruck on that like I, I regret so much because I was like I was so dumb in front of this guy uh, was Denzel Washington. I I, <laughs> I, had, I had like I was geeking myself out because I knew I was going to see him because I was working security for some of that an event that he was doing, and I knew I was going to see him. And so I kept, you know, like my, I'm just like, like going through all my, like my Denzel Washington things that I, that I, that I, that I've seen and heard. Right. I'm just thinking when I see him, I'm be like, ha, 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 ha. like Jake, Jake, you know, like I'm thinking like all these things that I'm going to, that I'm going to do. Right. Yeah. And then he shows up, he shows up and he stands right in front of me and, and he's about to have a cigarette. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, Hey man, you got a light? And I'm like, shit. And I just like, uh, I said, that's all right. I got one. I'm like, he's, he's, he smoked a cigarette for like a cool minute in front of me. I said nothing. I couldn't get a word out, dude. I couldn't get that one word out. And like he finally, he, he, he finally was done. He threw a cigarette. And he's not, he's not like, he's not like, good job, man. Because I was at looking security for his door. He goes, he goes, he goes back inside, and I'm just like, uh, Jake, Jake. <laughs> too little, too late, Jerry. Too little, yeah. too late. Yeah, too little, too late. Mm. You know, up here in Michigan, right. we don't get a whole lot of celebrities for. About 10 years, um, we were on this kick where we were given like Hollywood like tax breaks. So certain movies got shot here, like Justice League, I think. A um, couple, you know, a handful of blockbusters, different things. Uh, but, you know, I, I haven't lived in an area where they're just always walking around. I'm not really one to be star struck anyway. Um, but, you know, there are certain people out there like Denzel Washington where you'd be like, damn you know or president obama who pretty much anybody is going to be take a minute to acknowledge like i'm in the presence of a legend you know ronald mcdonald i like that one i don't know if anybody's going to top mr robert thomas's when i worked at mcdonald's as a teenager i met ronald mcdonald like wow (laughs) Oh, you met the Ronald? No. Oh, man, I always wanted to meet that guy. You know, if, uh, did you get his autograph or did you have a picture taken with him? What? Tell us more. <laughs> oh, man. So what's your favorite video, Blackheart Knight? Do you have like one that you've done that you're like proudest of or one that like you just for whatever reason think on fondly you'd want to mention? Let me. There's a video that. Hold on. Let me look. Look at my uh, list of videos on right quick that I didn't think would do so well, and uh, uh, I guess it might have been the title of it. Uh, it's currently got seventy thousand views, and it's titled "Perfect Example of How a Soft Hard Traffic Stop Should End." 
Now it was just mm. something I put together in ten minutes. Wow! And I didn't think it would do so well. And here it is sitting at my as my top ranked on my channel. I just, just, just over seventy thousand views. Seventy thousand. I do not have one yet to crack ten. I've cracked nine. It's inevitable. I know it's coming, but it's going to happen. I was looking at that earlier today. Just I, I think I just got like the monthly YouTube email or something, and I clicked on like the analytics button and just kind of went down a rabbit hole with it. And I was like, oh, 9,000 is my top one. So far, yeah. interesting. So I didn't I even remember. I remember my first 10,000 view video. Yeah. Uh, it was the one where. Big Wes was trying to audit that police station, ended up getting slammed to the ground. That was my first one that <laughs> hit 10,000. I haven't seen that. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I mean, we, I mean, they, you know, like, thankfully he saw the light and everything, and I'm glad he, 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 he didn't end up being uh, another nuisance. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for Wes, but he did have some classic ones, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, I, for, a, for a short time monitor, he had some classic ones. <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought maybe he was one of those guys that was sort of flipped the script. So, okay, you've confirmed it. Yeah. I've been meaning to ask somebody. He was, a confu he was confused as to what he wanted to be. He had no idea what the First Amendment auditing truly was. That's what the conversations that I've had with him he didn't know, and he found out the hard way. Mm. I That's think cool, that, Jam and Jet. I think that happens. That is cool, Jam and Jet. I think what happens is when people first realize that this is a thing, that this whole First Amendment auditing debate is even a thing, their initial response is to be like, well, yeah, I'm for free speech. I love freedom. You know, you're doing a good thing. What did you say? You're fighting for freedom and the First Amendment and free speech? Yes, I support those things. Those things are wonderful. They don't really look beneath the surface and realize, like, that's all just <laughs> That's all bullshit. Like, yeah. these guys don't believe in that at all. And then you're like, what? Person. Why are you pepper spraying that old lady? <laughs> right. Right. Why, Why are you really doing that woman in the back of the head? Yeah. <laughs> what they really do is they assault elderly people. Really, it's what it is. It's elderly abuse. That's what their channel should be called. It should be just called elderly abuse. Right. Or Regan's could be called like defrauding donors with my 501c3. Yeah. You know, they. Yeah, they Internet God. Yeah. That was one of my favorite ones too, where he tried to talk in that card reader. Yeah. <laughs> that Internet was beautiful. Was that that was beautiful. That's, that's funny. IG said that at the same time Rob said that. <laughs> have to Internet that God out. was the one that originally uh, gave him the name Big Wuss on my on my channel. So mm. I ran with it. And nice. uh, Big, <laughs> West right times, Big West has told me West has told me a number of times that his family still calls him Big Wuss to this day. That's, that's <laughs> well funny. that's family. That's, that's funny. family. <laughs> and that's one of those, like, you know, one of the things that's like pretty cool about doing this sort of stuff is, you know, to coin a phrase that catches on or to do something that has a little, has some legs under it. Like I'm actually, I work toward that. Like sometimes I use that to motivate myself. It's like, you know, uh, to have an impact, even if it's just like a niche audience to at some point, uh, getting that kind of traction. So it'll be fun when the day comes where I, I, I have that sort of sway over the audience. Fans are it worse than the actual overnight. audience. I agree with this I, I, IG comment. What do you think, uh, Blackheart? I, I, bet you're, I bet you guys are both probably in agreement with that, but maybe not. Because I, well, I I'm, like I'm, fans I'm, are worse. Yeah, the fans... Can, the fans... <laughs> If they're really that brainwashed, I mean, you got, the, I mean, like Denver Metro artists, I consider him to be like, in comparison to Jim Jones, he's got his followers, and the followers are just as well worse than he is because they actually believe it. I don't think you and I, uh, DMA actually believes any of that stuff. He's just doing it for the money. I agree. Some of these guys. I are fairly intelligent. Like Sean Reyes is not a stupid guy. None. I wish you stopped saying that. I know it is funny, but like, he's not, <laughs> he acts like an asshole. And you know, some of his, 
uh, positions and ideology uh, we obviously disagree with, but he's capable with all his 500,000 subscribers or so of actually having meaningful impact and change. Instead, he just... Long loves, Island audit. Yeah, he just with another bad life decision. himself on the camera. Hey, guys, look at me. Look at all these people outside the police station with me. All the sausages. You know? Yeah. He threw a big sausage fest and couldn't pat himself on the back enough. I, I, I just, like, I, to me, I don't see, like, like, I hear all these things about LIA, and he's none of that to me. Like, that's why, like, I just, I'm annoyed by all the things that people say he is, and I don't see it. That's, 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 yeah. that's my, that's my gripe with him, is that, like, I hear, I hear things like charisma, the guy is smart, and I see none of that. Like, I just see, like, low life, lame ass fool, like, Stupid! I like it. I don't. Call it in there, bro. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Preach, preach. In terms of like, what Jean Paul Reyes is, he is a charismatic type. He does inspire others to follow him. That that's the problem. He's uh, those that do follow him are not that well educated. Uh, I agree. They, Danny, Danny, Danny. Thank don't you. Don't do Danny. it to me. Appreciate it, Danny. She's, she, that's that's a conversation that comes from the morning because we were talking about spaghetti tacos and had, how spaghetti I, tacos I, are not it, not a thing. They're not. It had, it's not a I thing. Made spaghetti tacos. Taco spaghetti at one point. I made tacos. Spaghetti Stop it, Blackheart. Stop Here, it, Blackheart. I've never heard of this. Tell me more. Spaghetti well, tacos. I looked up looked it up, and all it is is uh, the, well, it was taco spaghetti. It's just where you take. Uh, Make your taco recipe of uh, spices and everything like that that you make out of tacos and mix it into spaghetti noodles. That's all I did. Huh. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, but you see, but you see, that's not, that is not talk. That's not spaghetti tacos. That's not spaghetti tacos. What that is, that's it's taco spaghetti, spaghetti seasoned. No, no, wait, wait. It's spaghetti seasoned with taco ingredients that's what that is because if you want if you call something like a uh, spaghetti taco it involves spaghetti going into either a hard shell or a soft shell tortilla and held while you eat it like a taco and that's just it doesn't go that's anarchy it's not it's not supposed to happen that's that's it's just not supposed to happen yeah yeah i hear you hey real quick i want to interject here because we have Society Red made a comment. Who's Sidewalk Boy? I know the others. Uh, uh, Silent, Silent Boy? Boy? Silence Boy, yeah. He's, 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 I, I can't he's believe you haven't, the, you haven't seen him. Of his. He's one of the West Coast crew. He's out in Los Angeles. Okay. Huh. Ugg, he's the worst, says Guadalupe. <laughs> All right. I'll have to check him out. Sean Paul. Yeah. Cuss or scream. I had yeah, I some, uh, much, probably for my own good as far as a creator. That guy, that guy's probably one of the most ignorant, like, oh my God. Like he 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 makes he he I have secondhand embarrassment when I hear him. And 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 then to like top it off, he does the worst kind of audits that you could that you, I mean, you you want to talk about like Friday in a church just being like outside the lines right how about frontering people who are just having dinner like sitting outside in a restaurant you That's know what, like yeah what guadalupe just said wow yeah that's like the worst shit you know and those guys in michigan who a freaking media was mentioned and michigan constitutional crusader freaking media pepper sprayed two people in a week and both of them is like look you're baiting these reactions at some point law enforcement Here's what I know, having been in the criminal justice system. It's not fair. It's not, <laughs> it's not often about justice, maybe sometimes. A lot of times it's just about money. It's about a prosecutor wanting to be reelected, so on and so forth. And most of us go our whole lives without running into problems with it. Now, me, 
okay on the other hand i have had some issues therefore i have some insight but i would love to see a prosecutor just and, and judge just be like fuck these guys right like look at how they're they're coming into our community they're not coming and spending money at our restaurants they're just stirring shit up and attacking our people pepper spraying people who are like softer than them right All right, what are you playing, Jerry? I don't think I can do it. <laughs> I thought I, I thought it was going well with your rant. <laughs> yeah, it did, but let's see what else we got. <laughs> Acoustic cinematic. I haven't checked all these out. We need to find some. I remember the first time I went to rehab, I decided to buy some beats from a guy. <laughs> and I like him to this day. I actually think he's talented, but we got to find some of our our own music jerry oh yeah for sure then we can, but you uh, want to hear a uh, funny first amendment auditor story perhaps one of the yes. uh, funniest issues i had with the funny first amendment auditor mm-hmm. i was on a i was uh, sitting in a uh, the chat of a live, live stream and i don't remember who it was and there was a first amendment auditor that auditor that came in there i don't even remember their name anymore uh, one of the uh, one of the lower ranking ones that you don't see too often came in there and said, Hey, Blackheart Knight, uh, I got a favor to ask you. Like, yeah, can you do a video of one of my videos? Like, what? You want me to rip apart one of your own video, one of your videos? Like, yeah, sure. Could you do that for me? Let me know when it's done so I can uh, watch it. I was like, yeah. So I did, I looked on their channel for any. Co- good content i found three videos just there's just so much trash on their channel i was like and i just was like i did i was like okay uh i just ripped apart those three videos and called her tra- her channel trash and everything like that i was like oh here you go and she ended up thanking me for it really wow yeah very interesting it, you know i and, wonder like go ahead go ahead yeah, go on a loop play. Do you remember that uh, uh, First Amendment auditor? Because since you say you remember that one, I don't remember her name. Because I sure as hell don't remember. I'll give Guadalupe a chance to respond, but Michigan surrendered to the frauditors. Law enforcement has a memo telling them to ignore them. I'm aware of that. I'm actually friends with a couple of guys in law enforcement just because of my, well, for different reasons, but one of them has a business near me that's just like a secondary thing and he told me that yeah he got a memo like they they're kind of given instructions basically to not feed into it which i get it you know after all the craziness that the last thing like a given law enforcement agency wants to see is one of their uh officers having some sort of interaction with a member of the public that goes viral and it's just like a super poor representation that wasn't Carolina. so shoot let me think come on guadalupe come on if you can't remember it it's not important i don't even remember i'm not going to spend all day looking through 800 videos to figure out which one it was (laughs) right i had so many videos i saw that i was like dang man you're like you're like one of those old timey like jukeboxes that has like a whole bunch of selections that people are just like right there like just waiting for that CD to pass by like yeah, oh, man. like come on you CD I know Stone Dedicated. Temple Pilots is in here somewhere. Dedicated to the. No, it's not accurate, Amanda. Uh, it was a female, and not a very good looking one either. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Black. Blackheart Knight, come on, man. Yeah, I mean, don't do that here. we don't, we don't, we don't body shame here, Blackheart. We don't body shame. Uh, yeah, Regan's gross. But I mean, but, really, uh, but I mean, they're ugly shame. on the inside. Uh, uh, Regan's disgusting. <laughs> but we don't, we don't do that. We don't, we don't put people down for their looks. <laughs> Regan makes me sad. But, um, you know what I mean. Anna, but no, not what, not her. I've done a video on her, but it wasn't her. It's amazing how many of these assholes are out there. There's hundreds of them. Oh, well, 
<laughs> well, I don't know if you know, but assholes existed before fraudsters. They just kind of like paint themselves <laughs> in different colors. Right, you're right. You're right. He's an excellent <laughs> point. Before, before the fire, I had on my computer. I was doing a spreadsheet of every fraudster that I've done, individual fraudster, and and it came out to be well over three hundred fraudsters that I've done at least one video on. Wow. That's insane. Who have so, you done the most on? Captain Happy, thanks for joining us. Yeah, that I couldn't Captain? tell you. Throw, a, throw like a, a, a small handful out of people that you've tended to. I think you said DMA and Regan, and there was a third, I feel like, early on that you kind of mentioned as targets. Was it Sweet Tea? <laughs> sweet Tea. That's Not another sweet tea. Yeah. I think I only did a couple, like two videos on her. Uh, I think I threw up a little bit. All right. She's oh, like, I she just to. does it for like approval. She's like the type of person that just will go along with whatever. So as she has a couple of people that will be nice to her, you know? Oh, I just, oh, I just, I was going to say, she just did it to get snuggles from DMA and I'm, oh, oh, right. You know, You're right, I don't You're right. Really You're right. Who I've done the most on. It's just, I pull them out so much these days. It's like, uh, they all blend together in my brain these days. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. They, it does. It's amazing. Like, I'm at 90 broadening videos right now. And even 90 is a lot when you think about it. Like, I think a lot of people jump into social media games nowadays thinking that, like, they're going to become overnight sensations. And it doesn't work that way. Not at least not for the vast majority of people. Oh, you you got to put in some work. Oh no, take some no, 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 Time. I, you, uh, and you know, and you know what? You know what's like crazy? Lot, you know. You know what's crazy though, um, uh, professor, is that is that uh, when you get it, when you get it like that, when you get it in a snap like that, when you when you when you when you're launched up like that, it it it. It, it sets you up for failure you know what i mean it's like it's like when you when you when you win a whole bunch of money all at once you know right it, it really sets you up for failure because it's like you get there but you have no idea how you got there you know like and you have no idea how to nurture that audience it's like yeah. you have to build yourself up because that's the only way you learn you're like okay I, I'm, I'm building i'm building you know like i'm getting people i i actually i actually love like you know not having a fast start like because it, it it makes me feel like you know okay i'm getting to know you know like what's going on i'm getting to know my audience and, and the people that i want to have around and stuff like that you know it gives you gives you a chance to really like scope out everything you know when instead if you were if you got launched up there and you were up there like right away it doesn't give you time to breathe and, and see what's you know like what the landscape looks like where you want to go what, what's your next step what's your next move totally that's a great point yeah absolutely a great point the faster the rise, the faster the fall. Yeah. And you made the comparison to winning the lottery. Like everybody knows that like <laughs> there are tons of people who win the lottery, even if by winning the lottery, that means getting uh, to play in the NBA or uh, major leagues or the NFL. And then 10 years after those guys initially break into the league, they're out of it and they don't have a penny to their name. Now I think they're teaching financial literacy, which I think is excellent, but um, oh yeah, yeah. A oh, lot yeah. of people, a lot of people, uh, uh, get a quick fortune and lose it. So, luckily for me, I've never had a fortune, so I've never lost one. Right? Isn't that <laughs> that's a positive way to look at it? Right? Yeah. So, but you know, um, we all work hard. You work hard, Black Heart night for sure you you demonstrated that and i think people respond to that i think people like to see the rise and like to be there for the journey you know i think about i'm a loyal guy and let you know if we ever get to the point where jerry and i are holding 230 instead of 23 um viewers at the one time i'm going to for sure remember the first 23 like it's just how it functions so uh and i'll see you Edie. thanks for coming in tonight 
But I think that's how other people feel too, because then they become like invested. They become stakeholders in your channel. They become stakeholders in your career, your journey. So it's it's better to get it organically and slowly. I think. And one of the most important things I can say about uh, when, about what I've learned about being a content creator is when it comes to your analytics and you see the view counts. You see the daily view counts. They'll go up and down, up and down.、Mm -hmm. Don't pay attention to that. Just go through the pain. Just work through it. It's like the stock market. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. You just got to have the right mindset. You're going to get frustrated, but just keep going down that path. Absolutely, that sounds. You always move、nice. forward. Up、one foot、yes. in front of the other, and you know I don't. I I try not. When I first started, I'll tell you what. This is the first year I even got in the stock market in any kind of way. And when I first did that, I was looking every have a good day, one, Jim and Jeff. Every day, every day at the prices, even though they were like cheap stocks that weren't going to fluctuate that much. And then when I started doing the YouTube thing, I was looking at those analytics every day. And I find that you know, as I go on, I don't pay attention to the numbers so much.、Um, probably the one I take a look at still on a daily basis is just the sub count. I'll kind of glance at that to see where that's at. But yeah, to, to watch the views and all that go up and down, I think you're just setting yourself up for anxiety. <laughs> yeah, you're just gonna set yourself up up for anxiety. Now, particularly, you're gonna lose subs. You're gonna gain subs. Yeah. I've had days where I've lost subs, and I've had days where I, I have ex, just explosions of、uh, subs. I mean,、uh, let me look at my analytics right quick and see what the biggest jump for me in one day was. Yeah, I'd be curious. He、uh, just finished telling us not、it. to look at it. He just finished telling us <laughs> not to pay attention to it. Yeah, 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 don't, yeah. Don't ever pay attention to it. Unless you got something to say, he's doing it as a public service, number one. And also, <laughs> the best advice is do as I say, not as I do. Right? That's always the best advice. August twenty sixth of last year was my largest、uh, jump, and it was one hundred twenty two. Okay. In one day. No, I don't even really know how to look at that. I have to look at that at some point, but I don't think it, I. Well, I, I haven't had one hundred twenty two in a day, but. I know that much, Danny. Danny, I'm doing I'm doing the the choker honk the horn thing. You know, like when you know, like when you when you <laughs> when you're like you, you know. Yeah, I'm doing that. <laughs> I'm doing that right now. You know what? I drove by a class full of kids sitting outside of City Hall, in my little town, and they were all doing that motion, and I got so excited. So I honked the horn. Only my car is an old piece of shit, so I had to frantically like. Press it three or four times. Like, where the fuck do I have to? And then they all got so excited and started to cheer. It made me feel so good to be a part of that. It was actually really <laughs> sweet. It was it was funny, man. So, well, look, it's, well,、uh, we you know we started earlier than usual, so we'll wrap up about three minutes. Three, two, three minutes than we normally do. I, I just want to say thank you very much, Blackheart Knight. I enjoyed the conversation、uh, a lot. Also, thank you to everybody who tuned in and, and commented. Of course, that means a lot too to the show. So you guys are、um, invaluable to the show and the channel.、Um, again, thank you very much, Blackheart. Jerry, what do you want to say?、Um, I, I just want to say quick announcement.、Um, I. I recently put a community post.、Uh, I, I'm 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 trying to get my tech up, guys, because I I know that in order for me to get out there, I gotta start making videos, and I'm really I'm really starting to work on them. But my tech is not good enough, and so I'm I'm trying to get money together. I'm putting it together. So if anybody can help, I put a community post out.、Uh, you've got a PayPal link, you got Cash App link.、Uh, anybody that wants to help, anybody that wants to help me out.、Uh, I'll, I'll be, you know, more than grateful, and it's only going to help me to bring out more content for you guys because that's what I want. I, I, I really want to put more dedication into my channel.、Um, I feel like I got something to say. I feel like I got something comedic to say for, for some of you guys. 
and and I, I just really want a chance to express myself like all the other content creators have. I mean, I love doing the lives and I love doing the lives with everybody and anybody. You guys know that, but I really, in order for me, my channel to grow, I have to create that content. And so I'm trying to get some money together so I can get something so I can put some videos together. So I, I, I got the community post out there. If you, if you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and ask me on the, on the community post. Uh, we, we, we'll work anything out. I'll, I'll work anything out. I really just want to grow my channel. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I hope, guys, that's one thing, too, I want to see uh, for Jerry. Um, I, you know, he, I have only met him recently and through this uh, content creation experience, but he strikes me as such a genuine person like truly and we know i think we know as human beings like when we're being lied to when we're dealing with somebody who is fake and i'm i'm just as much as i want to succeed i want jerry to succeed with me so i hope you guys can help out uh help him out a little bit uh black heart knight thank you anything you want to say before we go no i'm good here and you can you guys uh, jerry just keep the going with the hard work just continue looking forward don't uh, let the haters get to you that's one thing I can say because if you let that happen they'll bring you down every single time no thank you no. thank you thank no you Black Heart Knight I appreciate that no doubt alright guys thank you so much we uh I don't know I'll, I'll put a I'll put a, a post up tomorrow and let you know if we're doing one tomorrow if we're going to do the next one friday but we'll be back in the next day or two thanks as always and we will see you soon but for those who uh expressed their love of the rocket ship i'm gonna play it before we go out uh where is the damn thing uh here it is all right Go. And well, there you have it, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the interview. I know I certainly enjoyed being there. So, uh, like I said before, go check their channels out. They post regular content and are a couple rising stars within the community. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.